take off for your breakthrough. God don't say if you don't break off, you ain't going to still, you know, exist and, and be sustained and be maintained. But God says if you're ambitious and want to break through, not everybody want to break through some folks are satisfied with where they are so this may not be for everybody come on somebody but I hear the Lord saying break off for your breakthrough <laughs> if you can't get to a stage and get to some situations that you break off from you will not break through hallelujah Hallelujah. One of the things to break off from is traditions of men. God says in Mark 7 and verse 13, God said traditions will prevent God's work in your life. I didn't say the devil's work. I said God's work. He said traditions will make the word of God, <laughs> oh God of mercy, of none effect. There is something here. There is something here, traditions, and many traditions can overshadow your life. You know, the things you learn when you're growing up, the way that you, you approach life. Usually, if you come from a small country, you think small. I'm sorry to tell you, but that, that's a fact. <laughs> so, if you come from a small country, you practice just to think big. Because you, there's a tradition of doing things small. You're not going to have a stadium to hold 100,000 people. Come on, because your country have 200,000 people. So you never expect, come on somebody. Some folks go to a large church. They're accustomed to a small church that have a little room in the back and have all the coats in there. They got 70 members and that's good. Good church, don't misunderstand me. Good, you know, the fact that your church has 20 people don't mean that you're not powerful. Because you got some folks between 20,000 people and there ain't no church. So don't misunderstand me now, but you are accustomed to a church with 70 people and you have a nice coat room that holds 50 coats. Come on, somebody. But now God opened a mega church and, you know, and they ain't got no coat room and they're rising up against the church. So where's the coat room? No, if it's 2,000 people, you can't have coat room because after every service, you won't find five and the five won't sue the church. Come on, somebody. So once you get once you get into a mega church, you can't use coat room. Use having coat room, there ain't nothing wrong with coat room, but it can't work with a mega church. So some good thing that work with a small church, with a small movement, with a small country will not work with a large vision. So you got the, yeah, there are some folks, glory to God, who will try to keep you into the tradition of what you know. This is, this is the only thing I know. This was how I was born. This is all my mother was. This is all my father was. This is all I know. Not now. Someone said, break off for your breakthrough. Look at those things you're holding on to that can't fit now. Traditions. Another, another thing to break off from is not just traditions, but your culture, your race, your nation. The Bible spoke of Ruth in the Bible. My God, who was so attached to her culture. But then, and the attachment was because of her, who she was married to. You know, and, 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 and it so happened that who she was married to died. Hmm. But then she met this part, Ruth met her husband's mother <laughs> who came from somewhere else. And she saw that where, where Naomi came from was where God's leading was. So even though Naomi did not want her to come with her, she left her culture. She said, Naomi, I'm coming. He said, entreat me not to leave thee. When you hear about Ruth, you probably thought Hebrew, uh, uh, Ruth was a Hebrew woman, was an Israelite woman. No, no, no. She was a heathen woman. But when she got exposed, 
exposed to the people of God, when she got exposed to the will of God, when she got exposed to the people who were the hearers of God, she realized it. <laughs> Glory to God. And she said, Naomi, entreat me not to leave thee or to return from falling after thee. For where thou goest, I will go where thou lodgest. I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. I'm going to get very serious. God, you can have a lot of problem in your family. A lot of divorce, a lot of struggles. And God can bring an in-law in your family that can change it. My God, I don't, I don't plan to. God can bring one son in law. Come on, somebody. And that is a seed that God plant in that divorce clan. Come on, somebody. So he do things different, but he love God. Come on, somebody. And they are, you don't want to let go. Come on, somebody. But if you embrace this young man, or embrace this young, young woman, they're going to plant a seed in your crown that going to break that divorce, that, that divorce curse. Holy Ghost. And there you are, there you are. But you got to break off from that divorce-oriented clan for this new family, for this, mm, oh, Holy Ghost, help me here. Someone said break off. I'm telling you, this is a, a very strong example. If you want, you must know when somebody have arrived in your family. You must know when God has sent a David in your clan. Come on, somebody. And they kind of shake up things a little bit. Come on, they kind of cause a little discomfort. Come on, but you hold on to it. Someone say, break off for your breakthrough. If you know you got a lot of divorce in the family, don't hold on to the way they do stuff. Break off. Change it up. Come on, don't go to their events. I not got into trouble here. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Be nice otherwise. You make up otherwise. Come on, somebody. But you got to break off. Because you already see it never work. Don't go off party with, with, with the four brothers who divorce. Come on, somebody. And you want to keep your wife. Break off! Can help them otherwise. I'll be good to them otherwise. When they come on to family. Come on, somebody. They want to come and smoke at your house or drink beer at your house. Come on, somebody. No, 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 it can't work. Or because they live at your house, they want to put a beer in your in a refrigerator. No, 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 no. Break off for your breakthrough. Come on. Come on, somebody. There's got to be a breaking off. Somebody shall break off. Are you praying for the preacher? Someone said, break off. For your breakthrough, amen, you may need to break off from tradition of men. You may need to break off from your culture. I wish I could spend more time on that one concern in the family. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know the power of an in-law. You know the power of an in-law from God. Come on, most folks fight against their in-law. They have no clue. Come on, somebody. Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Somebody say, break off. Break off from traditions of men. Break off from your culture like Ruth. And let God work in your life. And then there are certain people you have to break off from. The Bible speaks of, of Abraham who was called by God and God told Abraham to go to a certain promised place. Glory to God and Abraham obeyed God. Then a good young man went to Abraham. Nothing wrong with that. His name was Lot. I believe he was Abraham's nephew. Am I right? Help me somebody and don't, 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 don't beat up on Lot for going with him. No, Lot did the right thing but that Lot didn't hear from God but he followed who heard from God and my God my God but there came a time when Lot, be Lot began to have some problems are you there somebody but Abraham still needed Lot because Lot was good to him but then things happened after a while that it could not work glory to God and Abraham had that tough job and Abraham said to Lot I'm sorry I love your nephew you are the blood. You are my blood, but I got to break off from you. Most folks can't break off from blood. Come on. 
This thing is major. I'm talking about, I'm talking about a breakthrough now. Come on, somebody. So Abraham called Lot and said, Lot, my God, I thank you for your hard work. But I'm, you know what happened? I'm not going to leave you with nothing. When they break up, it don't mean you must leave them with nothing. Sometimes you must get in your car and use your bicycle. Nobody don't want this stuff. I know, I know, I know we don't, I know we're not ready for this stuff here. Amen. Sometimes you have a motorbike and a car. And to keep the relationship, you know, you take the motorbike and give them the car. But you know you got to break off. Jesus. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And Abraham told Lot. Lot, listen, amen, even though we ain't working out, I'm not going to leave you with nothing. I can't do that. So you know what? You take the best and I take the rest because the rest with God is my breakthrough. My God of mercy, amen. Not only the rest, but the less. Less with God is the best. Come on. Somehow I can't get you. I can't get nobody praising God tonight. No, I got the right sermon. <laughs> My Baba Satanaba. No, I got the right sermon. I got some folks in discomfort tonight. But this is the bomb I'm telling you. Hey, I hear God saying, break off for your breakthrough. Even though Lot, I tell you, Lot didn't rise up really against Abraham. But Lot had to do his business and it was not working out. Lot needed to plant a different church. <laughs> not to open a wrong bar. Come on, you gotta understand. God wasn't saying Lot should go and do bad things. No, all Lot needed to do was to have a church on the other side of town. Oh my God. So Abraham said, listen Lot, you're a man of God. Amen. The anointing is upon you. I'm not against you, but we can't work together. So go on the east side of town or the west side of town. If you go on the east, I preach on the west. If you go on the west, I preach on the east. If you go on the north, I go on the south. Anywhere you leave for me is good enough because I know we can't work together. Pastor preach no message right here. And because he broke, he broke off, when Lot got into trouble, he could go and help him. So you see what I'm talking about? He met against Lot. Come on, somebody. Lot was not a wicked person, but he was not given division. So the thing he was doing became an hindrance to division. He could not work with division. He had his own herdsmen. He was no longer under Abraham. He had his own. And Abraham says, there's nothing wrong with that. But go and do it. You get in trouble, I'm there for you. And twice Abraham went and saved him. Someone said, break off. For your breakthrough. Yeah, so you got to break off from traditions of men. <coughs> break off from culture. Glory to God. Break off from certain people. Are you there? And you got to be willing to break off from certain places. Moses was in the king's palace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He grew up in the king's palace. But he reached a point which I prefer to dwell with God's people than to be in the house of the king. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I prefer to have nothing with God's chosen than to have riches and honor. Come on, somebody. And attention. And the Bible said Moses left the palace of the king to be with God's people. And when he left, he went through a lot of stuff, a lot of struggles. He got to go through this and what They tricked him and deceived him and, and all kind of stuff happened. But the Bible said that Moses heard God's voice. Hallelujah. Not in the king's house, but he heard God's voice in the bushes. 
you ain't saying amen. You ain't saying amen. He heard God's voice in the bushes. Come on, somebody. Because there are times when it's more important to break off. I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm gonna, this, the message is going to get mixed up right now. You see, all the Ebola thing, I told you there was going to be a reprieve. Did I say that? <laughs> Under God, I told you. Even though they said they're going to be 10,000 one week, even though we are the one who prophesied, you must hear God's voice. When God brings balance, you must hear that. And God spoke right here. And even though it's getting bad, there's going to be a reprieve. And right now, there's a reprieve in Liberia. Right now, there's a reprieve in the whole of West Africa. The numbers are down. Hallelujah. I could teach you how oh, I know, but it's going to take you too long. You don't have to be a big dream. Can I, can I give you a little hint? Oh, I'm going to give you a little hint. Come on. You want a hint? Because God said we have to still preach in Africa. <laughs> you don't want any teaching. You don't want any teaching. God gave a revelation. I heard the word Africa on somebody. I heard Africa. Hallelujah. It means therefore that God is going to cause revival in Africa. Some of you got to get up and go to Africa. We're going to preach in Africa. This vision. No, we already have churches there, but that's only the beginning. Glory to God. We are going to Africa with this vision. And it's the point I'm trying to say is that Afri the African people are the strongest people of prayer on the earth. They pray and they pray and they pray. So what I'm saying is that Moses in the bushes. Come on, somebody. Come on. It wasn't in the palace that he heard God. Come on, somebody. You ain't saying amen. You ain't say it was in the bushes. And there are some people who are praying in the bushes. In Africa, there are some folks, they live in the mountains and pray. Yes? Yes, you go to the mountains and you go up in the top and they stay for six months and they pray. They fast for 40 days and they pray and they pray and they pray and they pray. And they pray. Glory to God, and God is going to God is going to bless them. Come on, somebody, God gonna speak to them. And when this vision arrive in Africa, He's gonna shake the planet more than you have ever seen because these folks are people of prayer. So God is healing them of these diseases. As soon as He's gone, get ready, get ready. You begin to save some money. Glory to God. As soon as this disease is gone off, my God, I told my wife, you think I must preach again? I told my wife this week. I want to be here now. Come on, somebody. I would be in Africa preaching tonight because I know where God is talking. I know when God is talking. So tell them, tell them, don't worry yourself. More is Jesus coming, but God giving a reprieve for the sake of the gospel. Give God praise here. Give God praise here. So let's get back to the word. Glory to God, break off, break off, break off, break off from the riches. Go off to the bushes. Come on, somebody here. Break off, break off. My God, there's so much things. Break off from so much food. Amen. And go up, turn down your plate. Break off from lunch. Break up, my God of mercy. Amen. Break off, break off for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so much examples in the Bible. A man called this is special now I'm finished. A man called Solomon had to break off from his mother. Come on, somebody. Who allow herself to be used negatively against the throne of Solomon. Come on, somebody. Solomon had to break off um, from Adonijah. 
David would not let go of Solomon when Solomon went wrong. So now you got to break off from a son, Jesus. Solomon, uh, um, Absalom rather, Absalom, sir, who was David's son, began to rise up against David and he was excommunicated and they, they tricked David and got him back. They, they made David feel guilty. Like four folks make you feel guilty when you apply discipline. Come on, somebody. And they made David feel guilty. And they say, you got to forgive, forgive, forgive. And you are the most forgiving person on the earth. Glory to God. And the Absalom came back. And David had to run for his life. Come on, somebody. Like a vagabond. Come on, somebody. And David would not let go, my God, of, Abs of Absalom. And got damaged. Jonathan, my God. Jonathan had to break off from his daughter, um, Help me out there. From his father, the king. Remember that Saul was the king. He, he could kill Jonathan anytime. Oh, and the king, my God, but Jonathan saw the anointing upon David. Jonathan saw that a mighty move of God came on the earth. And Jonathan said, I love you, daddy. Amen. And we, we are one in blood, but not one in spirit because you have not seen the move of God upon the earth. So Jonathan said, I love you, papa, but I ain't gonna I love you to destroy Destroy this mighty move of God. Another man called Nabal. My God, the Bible call a man called Nabal. The Bible call him Belial. He had a spirit of Belial, and he could not see the anointing on David. My God, and when David needed help, he held back the help. But his wife said, "Listen, I love you, honey. I love your neighbor. But my God, I love you in flesh, but in spirit." I break off from you Rabakasada You are my husband in flesh But in spirit You have the spirit of Belial And I have the spirit of God And Abigail run off Amen in the night Amen and opened the door And gave David food And I am on somebody A neighbor couldn't have angry He had a heart attack Come on stand up everybody yeah, this thing is major now. You got to apply it where I did not apply it. You got to break off. Look at it again. Look at it on your own. Is that everything that you have, you must hold on to. Come on, somebody. Don't rise up against your wife or your husband now. Don't misunderstand me. I'm talking about the spirit. If your husband not saved, you are one in flesh, but not in spirit. You can't tell him the problems at the church. Yeah. He can't know the challenges in the church. He can't know. You have to break off in spirit. Come on. And there's some folks, even in the church, you got to break off from. You got to avoid. Did you hear what I said? So, you, so anointing is on some of you, and I can see it. Others can see it, but that's your problem. You can't break off, I'm telling you. And it shows, no, no matter how much. I'm telling you, if you hold on to the wrong company, it shows, unfortunately. Come on, somebody. Come on. No matter how much perfume you spray in the garbage bin. No, I lost it right there. Why don't you, why, why don't you try? Come on, son, pour all the perfume in there. You know what you're going to smell worse? Come on, somebody. Listen to me, mighty people of God. Listen to me, mighty women of God. You got to learn to break off. I'm telling you. You got to look and see why this preacher don't have a lot of preacher friends. I have a few. But I couldn't afford. I couldn't handle them in my ears. I'm not that powerful. Come on, somebody. Every now and then I say to my wife, then, mommy, what if I had that purse in my ears? Yes. No matter how much I fast and pray. Come on. They'll throw it all out. One wrong voice. One wrong company. Will destroy all the prayer and all the fasting. I'm telling you. So you're going to leave here tonight. Look back at those folks. And some of them. You never call them again for six months. 
I know you don't want to take this teaching, but I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they're not going to like you, but, but it depends on what you want. It depends on how much you want that breakthrough. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, you can't, you can't let them in on your phone for the next six months. I'm telling you, you're not going to be there trying to see if you can correct them. Say, why don't you change? Why don't you improve? No, no, no. You can't have this person on your line. If you see them, you'll be courteous to them, but you can't have them on your line. You got to break off. I'm telling you, you're not going to make it. Come on, somebody. I'm going I'm to give you one more example and then I'm finished. I always teach folks, no matter what book you read, never read a book without, I say read it back first. We, we, you know, the end, the end, the, the, you know, and the preface and whatever. You see anything funny, don't read it. And then while you're reading it, you still cover yourself under the blood. Yeah, because one sentence can destroy you in the subconscious. And one mighty man of God, my God, I can't even walk in his shoes right here in America. And he read a book that speak of more than one way to heaven. And 20 years later, 20 years, 10, 15, 20 years, he's preaching against all that's wrong. He's preaching against pluralism. He's preaching against several ways to heaven until he became so popular that he decided to run for mayor in a certain city in America. So the moment you begin to run for mayor, if you want to win, then you have to include people of all religions. And in a bomb, you remember the book that said there are several ways to heaven. And it knocked him. He began to say there are many ways to heaven. When he was finished, he said even Satan going to heaven. I'm giving you, come on, the great man of God that man can preach, he 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 can sing, 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 he do so much albums. That's Azusa Revival, the man, he started some re thing up the Azusa Revival, and then he began to say, Satan is going to heaven. Come on, somebody. You have to break off, break off from that book. Break off from that meeting. Break off, break off from that brother in the church who talking funny. Break off from that brother in fornicating. Break off from that sister who listen to pop music. I'm telling you, this is the bum I'm giving you right now. Remember, I haven't studied this thing yet. God has spoke five minutes before. I, I thank God I made it. But I got I, I, I to gotta tell you, you got to go beyond what I said. You got to say, God, talk to me, God, and tell me those things that I Preacher wasn't able to bring forth, but I need to break off from because I need my breakthrough. Some of your God has already released your immigration. He has already released that, that, that $200,000, but, but, but he, he didn't release yet because you hold on to that man. Come on, come on, young lady. Let go of that man. He ain't going to marry to you. Break off from him. Take your pain. Take your wound and let him go. God, when you let him go, if he's somebody, if he's worth anything, he will improve himself and come back and say the amen here. I can't get no amen. Young man, that woman who is not in church, not in the Holy Ghost, and you're hoping that she's going to be good. No, she's not going to be good. If she's going to be good, she's going to love God. She's going to love church. She's going to love She's going to love fasting. She's going to love the word. She's going to love holiness. She's going to love the church. Break off from that woman. My God of mercy. In the name of Jesus. Anybody have anything to break off from? Come to the altar right now. I need some strength to break off. Come on somebody. I repeat. Husband and wife. You can break off from wife. Or break off from husband. You break off in the spirit, but in the flesh you can't break off. Come on, somebody. We break off. Ananias, I'm not going to be a sapphire for you. Come on, somebody. Ananias begin to miss his way in the church. He begin to miss his way in the spirit. And Sapphira refused to break off. And she died like Sapphira. She died like Ananias. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, break off for your breakthrough. Break off from that minister who talking funny. Break off. I'm telling you. I'm telling you to just correct him. Break off from him. He talking funny? No, he going to destroy you. I'm telling you. No matter your fast and pray, is he talking funny? The minister? Come like he not with his leader? Break off from him. I didn't say to reduce it. I said break off. 
break off and he will take note of it. Because you're a strong woman. He'll take note of it. That's the only way he's going to get help. As long as you keep your line open, he's going to be emboldened by you because you're, you're the one that comfort him. Did you hear what I said? You know, listen to what I said. He said, it's your line that's open to answer his call that comfort him. Why keep on doing his thing? You close your phone, in one month time, he start to behave himself. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Pray right now. Pray right now. Pray right now. I said again, break off from that woman, young man. Break off. He's going to destroy you. Break off. Break off. Break off. Break off. Ah, oh, yeah. You're getting mixed up in some sort of a some sort of immoral life. Some some little funny things begin to happen. You got the wrong phone number. There's something funny going on, and it's, it, ain't, it ain't mature yet. But it's you know it's not comfortable. You, 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 you know it's not pure. It's not sin yet, but you know it's not the best. Break off. Break off. Break off. Go ahead. Pray. Ask God to just bring back to your mind those things that need to break off. Break off. Break off. Break off. Yes, break off. <laughs> break off for your breakthrough. You are breakthrough people. Yes, I'm telling you. 